Omen claims that this is the coolest 14-inch gaming laptop in the entire world. So today, we're gonna see what it takes to overheat it. This is the Omen Transcend 14. It's also Omen's lightest laptop by far, weighing just over three and a half pounds, likely due to the fact that it's made out of this magnesium aluminum metal alloy material. Spec-wise, the highest end model rocks an Intel Core Ultra 9 and an RTX 4070. However, the one that I'll be stretch testing today has an Intel Core Ultra 7 and a 4060 instead. Level one. Gaming. For my first attempt at overheating this laptop, I'm turning to a good old fashioned gaming session. Well, I'll be playing the finals for about an hour and then seeing what the max CPU and GPU temperatures of the laptop are. The display here is a 120 Hertz 2.8K OLED screen that has around 400 nits of brightness. So it does look good and should put our CPU and GPU under a lot of strain. All right, how hot did this get during our gaming session? Well, if we pull up the log, okay, this definitely did not overheat. CPU maxed out at 67 degrees Celsius and our GPU maxed out at 55 degrees Celsius. We're gonna have to throw some more heat on here. Level two, productivity. Attempt number two, this time I'm going to try to edit an entire short form video from a clip that I just filmed about trick shotting a stick of RAM into a motherboard and see how that affects the CPU and GPU temperatures. I'm doing it. The one thing to note here is that because we have one of those Intel Core Ultra processors, that means we do have access to the NPU, the Neural Processing Unit, which should help with some amount of editing since it might use some AI features in the background. All right, so I edited this thing to be around 20 or so odd seconds, but there's a cut like right here that I think is way more funny. So I'm gonna show you that really, really short version. Day one of attempting to trick shot my stick of RAM into my motherboard. How hard could it be? Really? Oh. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay, even though the outcome was short and not all that complicated, that was still using an editing program for 20 to 30 minutes. And if we take a look at the temperature logs, there were some spikes up to 72 degrees Celsius on the CPU, the GPU, as expected. I mean, that hit like five degrees. I don't even think it was using the GPU at all. But that means we're making progress on overheating the CPU, so let's keep at it. Level three, gaming and productivity. For attempt three, we're gonna load up a video game and keep editing our project in DaVinci Resolve at the exact exact same time, which hilariously put me in a situation where in the finals, after getting flashbanged by my opponent, instead of waiting there looking at a white screen, I just alt tabbed to my editing program to do a few little edits, and then like 10 seconds later, returned back to the game only to kill the guy who flashbanged me. <laughs> Most productive flashbang ever. <laughs> Wait, the, the CPU temperature is even lower than our previous test. How does that make sense? Check it out. The CPU temperature is just chilling around 47 degrees Celsius. The GPU temperature around 38 degrees Celsius, which means this laptop performed better playing video games and editing than one or the other. How does that make sense? Well, if you listen closely, I think you can hear the reason why. Hear those fans churning? Up until this point, I think the max RPM was like 3,000. Right now, they're chilling at 6,000 RPM, making it so that the CPU and GPU are ice cold. That said, temperature is only one part of this equation. Despite the CPU and the GPU being at relatively super low temperatures, the fact that we had a video game and an editing program up did reduce frames in both programs. But those temperatures, we're, we're gonna have to break out the big guns. Level four outside outside it's 70 degrees and sunny far from the most ideal environment to run an intensive program on your laptop and yet running a prime 95 cpu stress test out here in the blistering sun resulted in a max cpu temperature of 64 degrees with the fans at max speed i told you we would overheat this laptop but so far all we've done is kind of fail which means it's high time to break out the hot air gun if this can't overheat a laptop nothing will final round Fight. The temperature of the air coming out of this hot air gun is up to 662 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around 350 degrees Celsius. What we can do is just visually see how the CPU temperature is affected. As always, please don't try this at home. All right, switching on the hot air gun. Oh yeah, oh, that's already heating up really quickly. While we're at it, we're gonna run a CPU stress test, Prime 95, just to add even more heat to the fire. Also gonna fire up the finals again, our video game, because why not, up to 70 degrees Celsius. Boom, 80 degrees Celsius, now we're overheating. There we go, oh, it dropped, okay. Okay, so apparently that's how you hit 80 degrees Celsius on this laptop, just artificially inject super hot air from a hot air gun.
But you should know that as soon as you remove that hot air gun, even if you have a CPU stress test and a video game running in the background, your CPU is just going to drop to sub 60 within a matter of minutes. So the claim of being the coolest 14 inch gaming laptop ever, well, might just be true. So this got me thinking, how is it possible to cram an Intel Core Ultra processor plus a 40 series GPU among every other component into a tiny metal chassis and have it not overheat? Well, this is all possible due to the laptop's keen ability to catch playing cards. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. If this laptop wasn't able to do this, it wouldn't be as cool as it is. <laughs> but I'm kind of lying. This is only half of the equation. With the other half having to do with the same technology that hospitals use to treat scuba divers for decompression sickness. <laughs> I promise it'll all make sense. Let me explain. You see, a typical laptop uses thin metal heat pipes over top of its CPU and GPU to pull heat away from those components and then push them out of the computer with an exhaust fan. But that's actually not how the Omen Transcend 14 cools its components. Instead of just exhausting hot air, on the bottom side of the laptop we have two special intake fans, which is why it was able to catch cards because it creates a suction when those are close. But importantly, these intake fans are sealed off in such a way that allows for a vapor chamber to be put on top of the CPU and GPU you, effectively creating a zone of pressure that further amplifies its cooling capabilities. This pressurized chamber is known as a hyperbaric chamber, again, the same technology used in hospitals to treat decompression sickness. Oh, the last step that I forgot to mention is that there are still exhaust fans on the uh, Omen Transcend 14, they're just all in the very back and push outwards. And because there's those intake fans on the bottom, it ends up feeling cold on your lap, which is really interesting for a laptop to feel. Now, aside from the fact that this laptop's cooling mechanism is just downright fascinating, I do have some other thoughts about this laptop overall in general. I'm a big fan of function over form, so the fact that this is a gaming laptop that doesn't scream to everyone, I'm a gaming laptop, I think is really cool. In fact, it's one of the more sleek and professional laptop designs that I've come across, with really the only thing that you could say is a gamer feature is an RGB keyboard that you can just toggle on and off. But that said, if you're a fan of RGB keyboards, then, well, you can get the best of both worlds. But like, aside from that, just look how clean this is. Well, actually, don't look at how clean this is. Let me get a wipe. That's another one of my thoughts, you know, this magnesium aluminum metal alloy chassis. It, it does make the laptop feel high end, but I think at the cost of it, you know, showing fingerprints and smudges a little bit more than I would like. Luckily, I carry microfiber cloths with me like all the time, so it's not that big of an issue if you ask me. I'm a sucker for minimalist designs on my technology. As I mentioned a bit earlier, the screen here is a 120Hz 2.8K OLED display, which honestly looks amazing when playing video games. I would say on paper, its only major downside is that it's limited to 400 nits of brightness, which is fairly low for an OLED display, but that's just on paper. In practice, I haven't noticed any issues with the brightness, except for when I was outside in 70 degrees and sunny, which I wouldn't expect a laptop to outshine the sun anyway, you know? My other comment about the display is that reflections are quite apparent. I'm sure this also comes with trade-offs, but I know some laptops have like an anti-glare coating over top of the screen, which this one clearly does not have. Honestly, I noticed this mainly because I'm filming and need to make sure that you can see the laptop without reflections. In practice, again, much less impactful. Now for my second favorite part about this laptop, the first being the hyperbaric chamber cooling mechanism, if you paid extra extra close attention earlier in the video, you might have seen a sneak peek of it. Let's head back to unboxing this laptop. You see, in addition to the Omen Transcend 14 laptop over here on the left, we completely ignored this Hyper Xbox on the right. This is really cool. It's something that I think should happen way more often. If we take a look on the left-hand side of the laptop here, we actually see HyperX's logo as well. And well, that's because the Cloud3 wireless headset works seamlessly with the Transcend 14 without the need for a dongle. That connective piece is built directly into the laptop, so you can just grab yourself the headphone without having to do anything else. This is just one of those little things that goes a long way in improving the overall end user experience, which honestly is just awesome. So big kudos to Omen and HyperX for making something like this work. And I'm not just saying that because I wear HyperX headphones for like every single one of my videos. I genuinely just think this is a really cool feature. Who doesn't like not having to deal with yet another cable or dongle? There you go. Something else that's definitely worth reiterating is just how light this laptop is at three and a half pounds. Back in grad school, I owned a super heavy 17 inch laptop that I honestly just dreaded taking anywhere, which kind of defeats the purpose of a laptop's portability. So having one this powerful, this light and can stay this cool, 
honestly, it's it's worth taking a look at. Which, oh, one thing we haven't touched on is the starting price for the Omen Transcend 14, which I believe is $15.99. As I mentioned earlier, you can go up to an Intel Core Ultra 9 and a 4070, but I believe that $15.99 sticker price is for a Core Ultra 7 plus a 4050 GPU. That said, regardless of the CPU and GPU variation, all of these transcends come with the same base screen, which is again that 120Hz 2.8K OLED display. So with that, I would love to know your thoughts on this world's coolest 14-inch gaming laptop. If you'd like to learn more about it or place an order for the Transcend 14, I'll include a link in the description down below. A big thank you to Omen, HyperX, and HP for that initial sneak peek of this laptop at CES this year, as well as for sending out this review sample. As always, I've been Mr. Yeaster, your tech tinkerer, and I'll catch you in the next one.